If you're wondering which espresso machine is best, today we are going to cover six popular models to see how they compare. We're going to start with the more affordable models, which require a little more hands-on effort, and then move our way up to the more moderately priced machines, which are semi-automatic and fully automatic, in case you prefer a more hands-off approach to your morning coffee. We'll also talk about which machine makes the best tasting espresso and how easy they are to clean and maintain. For the sake of my budget, I've decided to not review any machine that costs more than $1,000. So everything you see here today will be under that price point. And just so you know, none of these machines were gifted to me. So I am under no obligation to give any machine a positive review. To get started, we're going to cover this DeLonghi manual espresso machine. This brand has a great reputation when it comes to coffee machines, so I wanted to try their most affordable model to see how it compares to the more expensive, fully automatic machine that we'll be discussing later. This machine is quite compact, so it's great for a smaller kitchen, but you also shouldn't expect any bells or whistles with this one because it is their entry-level machine. You'll need to start by grinding your own espresso beans or buying them pre-ground from the store. And you'll be responsible for making sure that you add the correct amount of coffee into your filter. For a double shot of espresso, that is usually two level tablespoons or about 16 to 18 grams of coffee if you'd like to be precise. This machine also comes with a single serving filter basket, which is stored next to the removable water tank and this is the filter you would use with single serving ESE pods, which stands for easy serving espresso, if you'd prefer to use those. This machine has a built-in tamper, which I find a little awkward to use because you need to press up rather than down, so you don't have much leverage. It's nice not having to store an extra accessory, but at the same time, it's also hard to gauge how much pressure you're using. I believe there is a newer version of this machine called the DeLonghi Stilosa, and that comes with a separate plastic tamper, which might help with this issue. According to the manual, it's recommended that you let this machine preheat for 15 minutes, and it does have a little cup warmer on the top of the machine if you'd like to warm up your mug while you wait. Because this machine is so small and light, it does move around quite a bit when you twist the portafilter into the group head. While it's running, this machine also shakes enough to move your entire coffee cup, so you will probably want to hold that in place so you don't lose any coffee. The most important thing to know about this machine is that there is no automatic shutoff. So when you turn it on to brew a shot of espresso, it's also up to you to know when to turn it off. If you walk away, your cup will start to overflow, and that definitely happened to me the first time I used it, and you'll wind up with a very diluted espresso. This is the biggest downside to this machine, in my opinion, because I prefer to push a button and have it automatically shut off when it's done. The other downside to this machine is that it requires a very short cup to the point where I thought I was going to have to buy a new set of espresso mugs because it's so short. But I learned a little trick that if you remove the stainless steel bottom, you can fit an eight ounce coffee cup underneath. This machine does include a milk frother so you can make a latte or a cappuccino with it, but you will have to buy your own milk pitcher for this one because it's not included. And cleaning wise, this machine is relatively easy. You'll always want to clean the steam wand after frothing milk by letting extra steam escape after each use and wiping down the wand. And the tray at the bottom is easy to remove and rinse. The only tricky part to clean is the portafilter because you'll have to remember to flip this part in the handle to make sure it grips the filter as you remove the used coffee grounds. Otherwise, the filter will fly into the trash and you'll have to dig it out. After you rinse it off, you're done with the cleaning process. Overall, this is my least favorite machine of all the ones I tested, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it unless you don't mind holding on to your cup of coffee every morning while your machine shakes like crazy. The next machine we're going to cover is the Calphalon Temp IQ Espresso Machine. 
This is the second most affordable model we're covering today because it's also a manual machine, which means you are responsible for grinding and tamping your own espresso beans. There's definitely a learning curve when it comes to tamping espresso, but once you get the hang of it, it can become a really satisfying part of your morning routine. This machine is heavier and more sturdy than the last one we covered, so it feels much nicer to use and it preheats quickly. It also comes with its own tamper and milk pitcher. Just like the last machine, there is a cup warmer on top, but what I prefer about this machine is that it will automatically turn off for a single or a double shot. That means you can press a button and walk away without your espresso machine overflowing. There's also plenty of room here so you can fit practically any size coffee mug that you prefer to use. The water tank for this machine is located in the back and it holds twice as much water as the last machine, but that's also because this machine is wider and takes up a little more space on your counter. It includes the option to steam milk, or you can have hot water come out of the steam wand if you'd like to use it to brew tea or make an Americano. Cleaning wise, this machine is also pretty easy. You'll need to clean the porta filter after each espresso shot and you'll need to empty and rinse the bottom tray at least once a week or any time it looks full. And the steam wand also needs to be cleaned after each use. Overall, this is a perfectly fine manual espresso machine, but it's still not quite my favorite, so we're going to continue with a few more. The next machine we're going to cover is the Breville Barista Express, which is a semi-automatic espresso machine. This means it has a coffee grinder included and it will automatically grind the espresso beans according to the filter size you select. You will still need to adjust the settings until you get your espresso shots just right, but I love how this machine shows you the pressure range so you can be as accurate and consistent as possible. If you're wondering how to adjust the settings on your Breville Barista Express, I'm going to show you a quick way to do it. Start by placing your portafilter on a food scale and zeroing it out so you can figure out how much ground espresso is actually ending up in the filter. Let the automatic grinder do its thing for a double shot, then place the portafilter back on the food scale to see how much coffee you get. The goal is to get about 17 grams of coffee into a double-sized filter. If you need more or less coffee going forward, you'll turn the grind amount dial to use more or less. And if you are finding the filter is overflowing without getting enough coffee, you can also adjust the grind size to being more fine. Once you have the correct amount of coffee, you'll use the included tamper to tamp down the espresso grounds. I find that I need to use quite a bit of pressure to get my coffee into the espresso range, but this part just takes some practice. Once you get your settings right and you get the hang of it, you'll be able to pull consistent espresso shots every morning. And there's something very satisfying about getting it in the espresso range that just makes me so happy and proud of myself in the morning. This machine includes a steam wand and a separate spout for hot water if you'd like to make a cup of tea or an Americano. I think this steam wand is the best of the machines I've tried so far, as far as the consistency goes for steamed milk and froth. And it's also the only other machine of all the ones I've bought that come with an included milk pitcher. Cleaning wise, this machine is very similar to the other manual models. You'll need to clean the porta filter and steam wand after each use, and you'll need to empty and rinse the tray at least once a week or any time it gets full of water. Keep in mind that every time you use a steam wand on any of these machines, water will be filled into the tray in the bottom, so the more lattes and cappuccinos you make, the more often you'll have to empty that tray. There is a convenient storage bin located under this machine, and this water tank includes a water filter. One of the only downsides to this machine is that there is no alert if your water or espresso beans are starting to run low, so you'll need to check that every time you use your machine. Keep in mind that in order for your steam wand to work, the water also needs to be full. The next machine we're going to cover is the Philips 3200 Fully Automatic Espresso Machine. This is the most affordable of the fully automated espresso machines that I've tested. 
This machine will grind the beans, tamp them down for you, and then complete the espresso shot just by pushing a few buttons. All you have to do for this machine is set it up with the included water filter, and it also includes a test strip so you can let it know how hard your water is. Then you'll fill it with espresso beans and water, and the machine will do most of the work for you. You can choose between a single and a double shot, and you can also choose how strong of a coffee flavor you prefer, how much water you'd like it to use, and how hot you'd like the temperature to be. After using several automatic espresso machines, the only thing I find a little strange about this one is that if you select the double shot option, this machine does not make a larger double shot all at once. Instead, it will just run two single shot cycles back to back. If you're not prepared for that, you might remove your coffee mug too early, and that second shot will end up going into the tray instead of into your mug. The milk frother included will let you make a cappuccino or latte, but it does not include a milk pitcher, so you'll be responsible for buying that. What I like about this machine is that it includes a bypass option for using ground coffee. That means you don't have to clean out all the beans you already loaded into the top. If you want to brew a specialty coffee or brew a cup of decaf in the afternoon. To use the bypass feature, you'll need to hold this coffee button for three seconds to make it switch over. And be sure to select a single espresso shot or the bypass feature won't work. Cleaning wise, I think automatic machines are easier to clean than semi-automatic or manual machines because you won't have to clean the espresso aspect of it after every use. Unless you're using the steam wand, which you still have to clean after every use. This machine will tell you when you need to empty the used coffee grounds and it will let you know when it's out of water. Typically, I need to empty the tray and the coffee grounds basket about once or twice a week. Fully automatic machines usually run a rinse cycle when they turn on and when they turn off, so that's why you don't have to rinse the espresso filter after each use. If you don't turn off your machine when you're done using it, it will eventually turn off automatically, and it might surprise you the first few times because it will run a cleaning cycle as it turns off. The first time I heard my machine automatically turn off, it made me jump because it sounded like my espresso machine was possessed but it's very common with fully automatic machines, so now you don't have to be surprised by it. The next machine we're going to cover is the DeLonghi Magnifica fully automatic espresso machine, which has quickly become one of my favorites. I love that the water tank is located on the side of this machine, so I don't have to remove it from under my cabinets to refill the water each week. I do have to move it to add more espresso beans because they are located on the other side and the lid flips up from the top. I think this machine is a little more intuitive to use than the Philips machine we just covered with the option to make a single or a double shot of espresso with the push of a button. You can adjust the strength of your coffee and the amount of water with these two dials. So with a little experimenting, you can make your espresso as strong or as diluted as you'd like it to be. You can also adjust how fine or coarsely ground the beans are using this dial at the top of the machine. This espresso machine also has that same bypass option, so you can use ground coffee when you want to make a cup of decaf in the afternoon without changing out all the beans that you've already poured into the machine. I also love that there's built-in storage here for a coffee scoop that's included, and it's very easy to press a button to switch it over into bypass mode. Just like the last machine, you can only use the bypass mode with a single shot. So if you want to make a double shot of decaf, you'll need to run two separate cycles. This machine will let you know when it's time to refill the water or when it's time to clean out the tray and used coffee grounds. And I think it's really easy to clean. All you have to do is remove the tray and empty the coffee grounds. Rinse everything off and then it's ready to use again. Just like the other machines, this one includes a steam wand in case you want to make a latte or cappuccino. And this steam wand easily moves out of the way when you need to remove the water tank. This machine will stay on for roughly two hours before it automatically cleans itself and shuts itself off, which I think is a nice amount of time if you tend to enjoy a second cup of coffee later on in the morning. 
The last machine that we're going to cover is the Jura D6, which is the most affordable machine that this company makes, but it's definitely the most expensive machine that we're going to cover today. This might not be surprising to hear, but it still kind of surprised me because I've used the same espresso beans in all of these machines, but the flavor of the espresso does improve as the price point goes up. So starting around the Breville machine, I felt like my espresso was tasting like really good, but as the price point goes up, the espresso tastes even better. So it's not surprising that the Jura, which is the most expensive machine, also makes the best tasting espresso. However, if I hadn't taste tested them side by side, I think I would have been in perfectly happy denial, not knowing that there was better tasting espresso out there. This Jura model keeps things really simple with just three settings. There's espresso, coffee, and cappuccino. After you set it up with the included water filter and set the water hardness level with the included test strip, it's ready to use. The water tank can be found on the side of this machine, and then you fill the coffee beans on the other side. This machine does not have a typical screen interface, but once you get used to it, it's pretty user-friendly. I love how it tells you when you need to refill the water tank, and it gives you a reminder to rinse the milk frother after you use it. If you love drinking a hot latte or cappuccino, the milk frother on this machine is one of the best, but it's also a little unusual. It uses a small silicone hose that attaches to the machine and the other end goes into a pitcher of cold milk. When you want to add steamed milk to your coffee, you can use the steamed milk setting or you can use the cappuccino setting and the machine will automatically add a single serving of steamed milk into your mug followed by a shot of espresso. And if you want to stop the milk early, you can always turn it off yourself as well. After you clean out this tube, you can store it in your machine when you're not using it so you don't lose any pieces. The coffee setting on this machine is also delicious if you like to brew a single cup of black coffee using freshly ground beans. The downside to this fully automatic machine is its price tag and the fact that it does not have a bypass option for using ground coffee. That means you can't easily switch between brewing caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee without totally changing the beans that are in your machine. After trying all of these espresso machines, the one I find myself going back to the most is the DeLonghi Magnifica, because I only have to press a single button to brew a single or a double shot of espresso. It's super easy to clean, and I love how easy it is to brew a shot of decaf in the afternoon if I'm in the mood for a cup of coffee, but I don't want the caffeine buzz. If you use this machine once per day for an entire year, the cost is about $2.05, not including the coffee or milk. This is still cheaper than buying a double shot of espresso at my local coffee shop, and I've heard from several readers that their machine is still running for seven years or more. This machine really starts to pay for itself if you tend to buy more than one coffee drink a day or you're serving more than one person. If you never feel the need to switch between caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee beans and a hot latte or cappuccino is your drink of choice, then I think the Jura machine is amazing. I love how you don't have to learn how to froth milk with this one, and it makes an amazing microfoam texture that is hard to achieve on some of the other machines. But the price point isn't for everyone. In case you're curious, it comes to roughly $2.60 if you use this machine once per day for an entire year, not including the milk or espresso beans. If you're already buying a latte every day, it should be well worth it because this machine should last much longer than one year, and you won't have to spend time driving to a coffee shop. If you want to save some money and you love feeling like a real barista, then my other favorite machine is the Breville Barista Express. I love how it grinds the correct amount of espresso into your portafilter and how it includes the pressure gauge so you'll know when you're doing everything right. There's a real satisfaction that comes from tamping your beans every morning and pulling that perfect espresso shot. Overall, this machine comes to $1.92 per cup if you use it once per day for an entire year. If you're making coffee for two people each day or drinking more than one coffee per day, then it's really a deal. 
I hope this espresso machine review has been helpful and be sure to let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me review any other small appliances in the future.